Hello everyone, I hope you are doing very well. I apologize for there not being a video last week, time just got away from me and I didn't have time to shoot one, so I figured I would shoot a quick one right now, just so you have something to watch this week. And uh, and that is the my most recent comic book acquirements. So, uh, as you know, I've been collecting horror comics and stuff like that, but also me being the big uh, kaiju giant monster nerd that I am, I've picked up a lot of giant monster comics. So we're going to start with Enormous. Let's see. In the midst of a planetary crisis, I'm waiting for this to <laughs> focus, uh, for, food and fuel, for food and fuel, a vast ecological cataclysm has spawned can't even read this. <laughs> Has spawned the enormous, massive beasts unlike anything witnessed, uh, ever witnessed. Displaced from atop the food chain, humankind struggles to stave off extinction, and a shattered society scrambles for refuge in the wake of the monstrous rampage. Amidst the ashes of Phoenix, Arizona, Ellen Grace, a former school teacher who lost everything in the monstrous uprising, leads a search and rescue team into the ruins of the city in hopes of locating children orphaned by the cataclysm, but not all the remaining humans think alike, and the world dominated by monsters, man is still the most dangerous animal of all seek shelter and this is actually a sequel there is a uh, first series this is technically season two as they call it uh, so this collects uh, one through six and then I have uh, number five here even though it says all new number one it's actually number five so I can't tell if you can see that down there I'm sorry this is number seven <laughs> I'm an idiot so this is technically number seven this is number eight. This is number nine. So if you see under number three, you see that little nine? That's what that means. This is number 10. I don't have 11. That's coming from another seller. Uh, as soon as I get 11, I will update you, but after that, I will have the entire enormous run. It was a very limited run. These were super hard to find for a long time. I got lucky and a website, uh, mycomicshop.com. I was lucky enough to, uh, acquire all these because I've been wanting them for a very long time. Next, I found, uh, from that same website, uh, this, uh, series called Strayer, which is about, uh, it's really hard to explain about some kind of super soldier that fights these giant creatures. But it looked pretty cool. I uh, haven't looked in, in, into it too much, but I figured why not? I'll check these out. That's number one. Uh, this is number two. This is a cool, I like that, that creature looks awesome. Number three. Number four, and finally, number five. And I believe there was this was only a five-issue run. Uh, I don't know if there was a second season or not, but if there is, I will find it, and I will definitely acquire it. Next was a, a title from Dark Horse called Giants. That's number one. Here is number two. Issue number three. And of course, I will be uh, reviewing these after I've read them all as a series. Number four. And finally, what looks like it's going to end in a massive giant monster fight. Number five. So, yeah, like I said, when I'm done reading those, I will definitely be reviewing them. Next up is uh, Giant Killer, and if you're familiar with Jack the Giant Killer, this is kind of a play on that because that that character there is supposedly Jack, which is, as I was understanding, some kind of super soldier, so it's an interesting take on the mythology, but that is number one. 
here is number two. Number three. Issue number four. Issue number five. I do like the artwork, that's really cool. I like the Japanese writing too, part of it. That's really cool. And finally, book number six. And then I also found these Monster World, which is like some kind of alternate reality kind of thing. And uh, if you're a big comic book fan, you might recognize the name Steve Niles. It's another reason why I picked this up. I'm a big Steve Niles fan. But it looked really cool. So there is number one. Here is number two with a, uh, to me, what looks like a Cabin in the Woods inspired cover. And uh, if you've uh, seen that movie, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. No spoilers. Number three. It just looks cool. I look, can't wait to get into this and read these. And like, look at all these monsters. Look at all those. <laughs> those look really cool. Can't wait to get in and read all, all that about. And then I found this graphic novel called Escape from Monster World. And it sounded really cool. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Escape from Monster Island. So, for decades, the U.S. government has covered up the existence of dozens of species of dangerous creatures that have been captured over the years. After building a small secretive city on a remote island in the Pacific, these monsters were transported there to be studied. In 2012, disaster struck and the island was evacuated. Now the inmates have taken over and different species fight for control within the city walls. However, something extremely valuable was left behind on the island, and the only way to recover it is to send an elite mercenary unit to the most dangerous place in the world. Monster... Island. I assume that's our ragtag group of commandos there. But yeah, this looks cool. And as you can see, like that uh, Cyclops is very uh, Harryhausen Cyclops from. Uh... Oh, what's that movie? I believe it's Jack the Giant Killer. I believe so. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I'm really looking forward to this one. And then, a fun little one called. Kill all monsters. Kill all monsters. Let's see. Uh, monsters rule the world. Humanity's last hope is a squad of giant robots and their skilled pilots. All from different backgrounds, each with a unique reason to fight. Can we survive the conflict? Are we worthy of saving? A familiar yet wholly original story about war, survival, and the human spirit told through gigantic scale battles fought by memorable characters. That sounds really cool. And again, it's like another uh, Mecha versus Giants Pacific Rim kind of thing. But, you know, I, even though it's kind of done a lot, I still don't mind because it's monsters. And I love giant monsters and giant monster battles, you know. I watched uh, Godzilla, Godzilla versus Kong. I've watched that about four times already. And, you know, I thought it was awesome. And uh, I'll be doing a full review on that soon. I found these uh, on Facebook Marketplace. A seller, part of a comic book group, was nice enough to sell these to me. But uh, these are really cool. Beware when werewolves die. This is uh, Beware. Apparently, I've never even heard of Beware. But Volume 1, Issues 1 through 7. I can't wait to dive in and see what kind of horror we have here. Here are just some of the stories featured. Unfortunately, the book, as you can see, there's some nastiness there. I'll have to try and clean it up without damaging it, but I was still happy to find it. And then we have a Mr. Mystery, a Gwindland Comics uh, production. And again, it sounds like it's another one of those uh, Tales from the Crypt kind of thing. Tales of Horror and Suspense, narrated by Mr. Mystery. Gripping and often graphic tales featuring controversial topics such as bondage and torture, drugs and severed heads, dismemberment, and all the other factors that scared the bejesus out of both readers and lawmakers alike. The artists are some of the best of the day, including Wolverton, Andrew Esp Esposito, and Bailey. This is a pre-code horror at its best. So pre-code. 
Precode Horror Comics. So, what exactly are Precode Comics? Um, Precode, for those that don't know, there. Ooh, I wonder. <laughs> looks like someone's a uh, little bookcase, bookmarker here. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Hollywood, California. <laughs> Anyways, uh, pre-code. You could pretty much put anything in a comic book. Severed heads, blood, all kinds of nastiness. And finally, uh, I believe it was in the late 50s, early 60s, a group got together. They said it seems pretty tame, but now, but you know, nowadays, but back then, like, a hanging skeleton with no skin, that was, uh, pretty graphic back in the days. But, uh, anyways, like I was saying, um, you could have some really horrific things, some really graphic things, and... Uh, finally a group of, of assuming angry parents or a governor or you know someone decided you know oh, we have to put restrictions on all this so they started doing coded comic books so that's where you see things like uh, let's see here suggested teen plus you'll see that on a lot of comics you'll see e for everyone kind of like the same basic uh, video game styles. Like, uh, let's see. Is Enormous Mature? I think Enormous might be Mature. Let's see if I can find that. No. Okay. If it is, I can't see it. It might be covered up here somewhere i can't really tell but yeah so you'll see some comics it'll say m for mature and like nudity and graphic violence and stuff like that so the pre-code stuff you could get away with all of that you didn't have to submit your artwork and your stuff to censors and all that so you could pretty much put a lot of things and there's a comic book i uh the last motor city comic con i went to this was pretty cool to see um uh, there was a booth there, and there was a bunch of younger kids, probably 16 to 18, and they were wondering why some of the, like, they had some, like, holy grails, like, uh, action number one, first appearance of Superman, uh, like, a lot of first appearance of stuff, and they had a comic book, which pretty much was the, uh, the one that <laughs> was the final straw, and that they, uh, put the nail in the coffin which featured a severed head and he was just showing them like that's what started all the codes the comic book codes and stuff like that and it was cool to see just someone schooling some younger people on some you know because they didn't really look like comic book nerds they just kind of looked like they were just there to waste some time so the fact that they were interested in it and uh you know spent some time listening to the story but uh that comic was going for twelve hundred dollars and I'll tell you what, I was super tempted to buy it. I just didn't have $1,200. And I don't think I'll ever have a spare $1,200. <laughs> but maybe, maybe one day, you know, maybe once this YouTube channel launches and I become, you know, one of them YouTube influencer millionaires. Never going to happen. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> but it just looked like a cool comic to have. And me being the uh, horror fan I am, I really wanted to check it out and uh maybe one day but it was just cool it was some cool knowledge and cool history about comics and uh it's another reason why i'm really into collecting a lot of these old horror uh horror books and stuff like that like these i don't mind these reprints they're cool it's nice to see them in color and everything but i like to find originals because i like to preserve that history and everything it's just there's some are super expensive and some are super super hard to find but anyways i'm gonna finish blabbing on because i've got to get to bed and i got to get to work and all kinds of stuff but yeah this, you'll have this video coming and i will be doing more um probably more comic book stuff more recent book stuff blu-ray stuff um i'll also be doing uh the mortician reads uh, his favorite scary stories coming up be doing some more of that some more lovecraft some more uh 
harder stuff, more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A little more mature content. There is a book I'd like to read. It's one of my favorite, I'm sorry, the mortician would love to read. It's one of his favorites. And, uh, so he might be doing a chapter at a time. Uh, just depends on, uh, how he's feeling and, uh, what it's going to take for all that. But yeah, I uh, just wanted to give a quick update on what's coming up. Uh, I appreciate you hanging in here. I do apologize again. There was no video last week. I had a bunch of stuff to do this weekend, and I just did not get time to finish the last couple weekends, actually. It's been super busy. But um, hopefully this weekend will slow down. I can shoot a bunch of videos, uh, get them prepped and everything for you guys. But thanks for hanging in, in there with me. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a truly fantastic day. I love you all, and I thank you all, Paranerds, and we'll see you in the next one.